I found out early on as a lawyer, it doesn't matter about the law. It's about being able to tell a story. If you need something to watch right now on Netflix, there is a new documentary series called Trial by Media. It zeroes in on how six high-profile court cases were covered in the mainstream media. Some get a fair shake, but others do not, including the case of former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich. He was lampooned in the press. He was convicted of trying to sell then-President-elect Obama's Senate seat. In the documentary, his wife, Patricia, stood by him throughout his entire eight-year prison sentence. She also participates in this episode and gives us an unvarnished view of what it's like to be the subject of intense media scrutiny. And we're honored to be joined now by Patty and Rod Blagojevich, their first joint interview since 2009. Thanks so much for joining us. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much, Patty. Honey. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's nice for, to be here. first of all, you know, for anybody who's married, watching this uh, episode of, of Trial by Media, I think is a testament to the strength of your marriage, to the, anyone's marriage, but especially for a political couple uh, f facing this type of media onslaught. I know you get into this a little bit in the documentary of Patty, but how did you do it? How did you guys stay together? Well, it's, um, you know, we've we're going to be celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary this August. So we've been together a long time. And um, when these charges were brought down on my husband, um, I knew his heart and I knew his thought process. Rod and I worked together a lot on his campaigns and, you know, some initiatives that he uh, was putting forth as governor. And so I knew his intentions. I knew his heart and I knew how unjust and unfair this uh, prosecution was. And so it's not like he was... Um, a mystery to me, like mm -hmm. like he was hiding secret bank accounts or something. Like I, when I look at him, and say I don't know who you are. I know who he was. I know how unfair it was. And when something ha like that happens to somebody that you love, um, you have to stick by by them and see them through the storm that they're facing. Well, it's amazing, you know, what you guys have been through in this situation. You know, Patty, you of course grew up in the Chicago political machine. It's not like this is something new to you. But what we saw with this case, Governor Blagojevich, and I think we see this too often, is you were, you know, a darling of the media for the longest time, up until that point when they felt like it was more advantageous for them to treat you as the villain in this type of situation. And there obviously was some evidence to go along there. You did get convicted in this case, but. You know, was it surprising to you the way the media turned on you as quickly as they did? It was shocking to me because the allegations all along have been uh, were super sensational and they were fake. The so-called sale of the Senate seat was never a crime. That was ultimately reversed by the appellate court. They called it routine political log rolling. So, no, I thought when the preposterous nature of the allegations against me uh, were told to me after they arrested me at 6 o'clock in the morning with SWAT teams all around my house with our young daughter sleeping here in the dark in the wintertime, uh, I thought for sure the media would see it for what it was. How could anybody be so stupid to think they could actually sell the president's Senate seat when you're a high-profile governor and they've been chasing me, these federal, federal prosecutors, since December of 2003? I knew they were looking at everything I did. So I believe the media would be one of the ways that I would be vindicated because I saw early on that the court system was rigged. They were, mm -hmm. they, they, they cherry-picked conversations against me, 1% of them, and wouldn't allow me to play tapes in court. So it was a battle uh, in the public, uh, in public, public opinion, in the sense that it was the only place I can go, the court of public opinion, to get at least a shot at getting my side of the story out, because I was denied that in court. Um, so yeah, and eight, eight yes. years. I mean, eight years you spent in prison. It's, it, you think about that sentence compared to some of the other sentences you read about, and they don't get a lot of coverage uh, because they happen every single day. You hear people getting much shorter sentences for violent crimes in situations like this. Uh, Patty, do you think, you know, if the media treatment had been fair during the course of the trial, the sentence would have been less? Um, I don't know about that. I think that um, in many ways the case against us was rigged from the very beginning. I think that um, the judge in the case was just like the fifth prosecutor in the room. And I don't think there was any way that we were getting a fair trial. I think the media helped heighten that and maybe, you know, helped sway the jurors um, one way or another. I mean, I think that they... Um, 
I think that in many ways there was no way we could get a fair trial in our jurisdiction because of the media hype. I mean, we might have done better if we were able to move the case to Iowa or something like that um, because of the uh, media hype. But I think that um, the game was rigged against us from the very beginning with the judge and the prosecutors that we got. It looks like that. Looks like that when you look at the facts of the case. And you know, again, here the situation in hindsight seems so egregious. But nowadays. It's, the situation's gotten worse, in my opinion, with the way the media and certain members of uh, the political apparatus latch on to certain things, certain sound bites, certain pieces of evidence, and use those to perpetuate stereotypes and myths. Um, Governor Blagojevich, is there anything particularly with any story right now in the media that you think is being mistreated by the so-called mainstream media, the big corporate press? Yeah, well, absolutely. I sat in prison and I watched the whole Russian collusion fake investigation unfold. I saw that ridiculously unconstitutional impeachment against President Trump for a phone call where the president was exercising his constitutional duty to explore the possibility that wrongdoing might have occurred. I saw that unfold. I saw what they did to General Flynn, and it was deja vu all over again. Now, here's what I truly believe, John. When someone takes a serious look at my case and what they did, sending a governor to prison for things that aren't crimes, for practicing politics, for seeking campaign contributions without a quid pro quo, when someone looks into that, they'll see the parallels, because here's what's they, what, what happens. These prosecutors know what they're doing. It's the same ones that did it to me, that tried to do it to President Trump, Comey, Mueller, Fitzgerald, the same crowd. They use the same playbook. They're the same players, and they're and they and they know what they're doing. They they come up with these fancy names. They label something: the sale of the Senate seat, Russian collusion, mm -hmm. and they get that up and running with a super sensational charge. And the corporate media, as you say, they run with it because they're not pursuing the truth. That's not their first objective. Their objective is ratings right, and right. advertising. Right. As and soon so as that takes hold with their audience, that's what they pursue, not the actual truth. Right. Uh, and that's unfortunately that's the problem with so many of these cases, and we see it over and over again. Well, I can't recommend this documentary enough, and it gives, you know, it's, it's poignant now, considering everything we have going on in the press. Um, and, you know, kudos to you guys for sitting down and doing it. And I, again, everybody needs to watch this. It gives you a better understanding of what happened then. Al Sharpton, we just saw on, on the uh, camera there. Uh, and the Tawana Wally uh, case, uh, that whole situation, Brawley case, um, your case is examined there. There's another case with Jenny Jones and her show that's examined as well. It's powerful stuff and, and educational as well. Great to see you guys. Thanks so much for your time. And congratulations on nearly 30 years of marriage and inspiration for everybody. Thank you, John. If I could just say one last thing, I'd like to praise my wife. When they were first arrested me, the Vegas odd makers had it something like, odds makers had it something like nine to one that she was going to leave me. Now, I've been very, I've made misjudgments in my life, but the best thing I've ever done was meeting my wife and falling in love with her and walking through life with her. Well, I love to end it like that. I mean, you know, everybody faces uh, difficulties in their marriage, not like eight years in prison. But again, uh, a reminder that uh, our petty problems are, are small in comparison sometimes. Great to see you both. Thanks so much for your time. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, stay with us more. Great to see you both. Thanks so much for your time. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing news channel, now in 65 million homes. Get Newsmax TV on all the major cable systems or go to NewsmaxTV.com and click on the Find Newsmax tab to locate us. Remember, Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.